Oh, hi there, so you found the way to my channel. I'm really glad you did, and maybe you will too. Now, let me explain to you who I am. I am Visual Ponies the narrator, just some German guy reading My Little Pony fanfictions. In the future I might branch out, but right now My Little Pony is all I do. So, what have I read already and why should you subscribe to my channel or even watch what I have done? Well, I have done stuff like Fallout Equestria. We picked up the signal near within an hour of setting down at Junction R7. It wasn't from Shadow Turf. The mechanized voice gave way to one I had written off ever hearing again. The voice of our overmare. Little Pep, Velvet Remedy, if either of you can hear this, I pray you're still alive, still out there to hear this. Please, if you or if any friendly pony can hear this, Stable 2 is under attack. We don't know who they are or where they came from, but they have somehow opened the front door and they are killing every pony inside. I've evacuated all the survivors into the security and overmare's wing. But now that we are cut off from the orchard, we are running out of food. The invaders seem content to wait us out. If you can hear this, please save us. My blood turned to ice. I analyzed the signal. The broadcast was being piped through the same transmitter that the father of the dying cold had once tapped into from the cistern under the big Macintosh memorial. The mechanical voice returned. Home. Message repeats. This is an automated distress call from Stable Tech Stable 2. Message begins. Oh goddesses. Calamity, turn now. We have to get to Stable 2 fast. Uh, Lil Pep, I'm about to collapse here. What's a... For the quest share Project Horizons. How did I let you talk me into this? Little Pip shrieked as the next wave of screaming, clawing ghouls came charging at us. Her revolver, a sweet, custom modified IF 18 horseshoe that I slightly wanted to snuggle even while fighting for my life, barked and transformed the head of the monstrosity slashing against my upraised hoofs into twitching corpse meat. I heaved the body away from me and into a crowd of three more. It was amazing. Think about walking, fall on face. Don't think about it because you're too busy dealing with dozens of shrieking zombies while inebriated. Limbs work fine. Which was a very good thing. One ghoul opened its mouth wide as it lunged and I reared on my back legs and punched my hoof into its maw. The combined momentums drove my hoof out the back of its head, rotting brains smearing it as I pivoted on my rear legs and threw the cops at the three scrabbling to their feet. Hey, this is your secret passage! I shouted as another ghoul lunged in low and leapt over its snapping jaws. All four legs came straight down on its head and the zombie's skull popped like a rotten apple. And followed Equestria Starlight. I blinked as I stared down the hallway. I really gotta stop doing this! I thought as I wondered which door would open next. I mean, come on, why is it always me that gets knocked unconscious? The bare hallway stretched out before me as the torches hanging over the doors provided very soft light as I sat there waiting for the next door. The foosh indicated the door further up the hallway on my left. I trotted up and pushed the door open, a creaking noise meeting my ears. I stepped out and into a ministry office where two purple mares that looked nearly identical were standing there arguing over something. One of the mares looked like Twilight while the other looked like a desaturated version of the other, her coat almost a light grey color. No, 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 I'm not going to do it, the grey mare shouted at the purple unicorn who rolled her eyes in response. She said we have to, silly, the other mare chirped excitedly before sticking her tongue out. Also, Project Sunflower. To Robert Thompson, Chairman of the Committee on Human Survival. From Dr. Paul Velchiak. Dated June 15th, 2037. Bob, it's been almost two years since the impact. Two years of tiny machines, semi-biological in nature, swarming in the uncounted trillions from the impact crater tearing our world apart atom by atom and rebuilding it. Animal, vegetable, mineral, all terrestrial matter that those alien nanomachines encountered being torn apart and rebuilt as something else. 
Two years of an expanding circle of black matter radiating out from the impact site, creating what looks like a massive oil slick. An oil slick hundreds of miles in diameter and growing at an increasing pace every day. An oil slick that somehow moves and ripples as if it's alive. And that's why we call it the Black Tide. But I'm sure you know all that. It's your commission that's supposed to be salvaging what's left of humanity and ensuring our survival after all. You've asked the scientific community to come up with a plan to stop the tide. A noble goal, but one that we become less optimistic about with every passing day. Project Sunflower Harmony. The silence is intense, so no, I can't say I currently have loyalty for Chrysalis. It frowned. That will change the moment she contacts me again, so I suggest you ask your questions quickly. What are Chrysalis's plans for changelings on Earth? Marcus asked, interrupting whatever question Felsper had been about to ask. And are there any other changelings who came through? The changeling shook its head. As far as I know, I was the first. The grand experiment. If I was able to stay disguised, only then would the others come through after me. They'd be disguised as some of the other ponies you'll find at the bakery. I don't know all their identities, because I didn't need to. But if you figure it out, then you'll find your disguised ponies. It hesitated, then... Please, don't hurt them if you can help it. They have as little choice in this as I do. The questions went on for a while longer. The changeling answered them as best it could. After the human and pony left it, it went back to laying on its bench. Eventually, it managed to fall asleep. My new life in Equestria. Wow, you two look good for your age. Thank you. Celestia chuckles from the flattery. I must say, I expected your arrival eventually, but not with you bearing such a ladder. If I can call it that, it reads more like a novel. I was wondering what the point of all of it was until I got to the end. I know, I'm sorry about that. I just wanted to give you some context to my decision. I appreciate that, but you could have just told me yourself. I'm not sure you would want to sit in a room with me talking for hours on end about my problems. Matt, I just told you that I am over 2000 years old. I have seen many plays, some entertaining, some extremely boring. I'm pretty sure that I could manage a one-man show about his life in this world. Then it would depend on what category you would put that show in. You don't know if my delivery would be boring or entertaining. You have a point, she smirks. Nevertheless, I am grateful for your patience waiting outside. How long did it take for you to write this, by the way? A couple of weeks, and not very long. Letters are normally written in a few minutes, as it's pretty long. I had a lot to write about. Fair enough. How far were you on the progress of the spell? And other great stories. Quite honestly, there are way too many stories for me to count them all down here. But you get the drift. All in all, I have over 500 hours of audiobooks on my channel right now, so you might too want to check out that playlist tab. So, I'll leave you to it now, and hope you enjoy my work. Sincerely yours, Visual Pony.